These are not bone conducting headphones because bone conducting headphones have been sort of the go-to headphones for outdoor sports for the last few years, but they've got one fundamental problem with the technology. Oh, that's making my face vibrate. Oh, it's too buzzy in my ear. I don't like it. And we'll get back to that in just a minute. But a few years ago, I was nearly killed by a tractor when I was out on a run. And ironically, I was reviewing headphones at the time, in-ear headphones that were said to be the best headphones for sports of all kinds, including running. And I didn't hear the tractor until it passed within about half a foot of, or felt like that anyway, of my ear, and I felt it rumbling past. Had I shifted out a little bit to the left, I would have been flattened, didn't hear it, had absolutely zero awareness that that tractor was there. And ever since then, I have avoided wearing in-ear headphones. The fact is, in a lot of circumstances, it's just not safe wearing headphones that don't give you a good situational awareness of what is going on around you. Because I've also nearly been wiped out on trails and forests by mountain bikers here zipping past that I haven't heard either. And for outdoor sports and outdoor activities, I just don't think it's safe wearing headphones that go into your ears and plug them up. And the other aspect is when I'm out and about, I like to, I like to feel the wind rushing past my ear. I want like my ears to feel free. <laughs> And when I've got headphones stuffed inside my ears, I can't do that. My ears get hot, they get sweaty, and they get uncomfortable. And that is where these come in, because these are the Oladance OWS Sport headphones. And you're gonna be seeing a lot more of them on this channel because they are the best headphones that I've ever used for trail running, running in general, and just outdoor activities. And we'll come back to these headphones in just a second, but before then, let's talk progress because there have been two technologies that have emerged in order to solve the safety problem of in-ear headphones and also the comfort issue and the first solution was bone conducting headphones and this is the type of headphones I've been wearing for the last few years. These are the Shox Open Run Pro and the way these work, you can see the, the way they press together like that, they've got two pads here and here and those pads, you put them on your head and they sort of press against and you can see here, these pads touch that bony area around your ears, and then they use vibrations to transmit the sound into your head. And they work pretty well. They work really well in this, keeping your ears open. Nothing in there, totally open, totally free ears. And the sound quality is, it's okay. Um, it's good in some circumstances, but the main criticism of these headphones is that the sound isn't fantastic, especially when it comes to bass, because the only way they have of producing bass is by vibrating essentially a bone on the side of your face. Now these Shox Open Run Pros have the best bass of any bone conducting headphones, but they still do have one sort of issue with how that bass is produced. I've got a bassy track for you here. Bassy track. Is it? Because I'm all about the bass, but the bass, no treble. Oh, that's very, that's making my face vibrate. <laughs> it's buzzing, I don't like that. It's so don't put your fingers up, don't put your fingers up. No, but it's right, what does it feel like? Oh, it's too buzzy in my ear, I don't like it. And in order to get more bass, all I can really do is vibrate against your head, vibrate against that bone a bit more, and some people really can't stand it. But it's buzzy in your ear. I, I don't know. What the quality of the music sound? No, it's my, oh, it's a bit crackly. Crackly? I don't know, but the buzzing in the, the <laughs> buzzing, like buzzing, buzzing is, it's. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'll pause that. We'll swap. It's not, a, it's a sensation, like it's a vibrating sensation. <laughs> we'll take those off a second. The Ola Dance work quite differently. We're playing Bad Guy by Billy Eyelash. Billy Eyelash? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, if you're out running in an environment like this where there's background noise, you will have the volume up full, so that's a real. Uh, runnings. Well, that's not as buzzy and annoying. Okay. Well, hang on. There's something in one ear but not the other there. That's called stereo, Louise. What's that like? Yeah, the singing is much more clear. What about that one? Are they bassy? Oh, yeah. But not in an annoying way. So you can't feel it? That no. Vibrate? Okay. And what about the lyrics, the, the other music? There. Well, it feels better balanced. So if you had a choice between those two, 
based on that vibrating test you did than these ones. Instead, these headphones use what's called open open ear technology. The OWS stands for Open Wearable Stereo, and they basically use tiny little speakers to inject the sound straight into your ear without anything being in there, resulting in a much richer sound. Which is particularly important for somebody who's trying to put in a really hard run, results in a lot more bass. So here is a video of my very first time comparing these two very different technologies. Okay, this is gonna be my first time comparing the Oladance headphones to my current favorite running headphones, the Shox Open Run Pro. I am out in the countryside, there's a five to 10 mile an hour breeze blowing, bit of wind, bit of background noise, there's birds over there. And I'm on a road, so there's a little bit of traffic noise. And I can hear the dual cars way in the distance. So I've got, it's not a clean environment. It's, it's the ideal scenario for a proper real world test for these headphones. So let's uh, put on some 80s-esque cheese. <laughs> And we'll start with the Open Run Pro and I'll swap them over. It sounds all right, it sounds what I'm used to. I'm able to hear the music while having still sort of an awareness of what's going on around me. There's nothing in my ears. There's really not a lot of bass. It doesn't sound anything close to what a pair of actual in-ear headphones would. All right, let's swap these over. There we go. Slightly different fit, but to be honest, I don't really feel that they're there. They're still very, very light. Let's play the same music and you're gonna get my real first time reaction of the difference between these two sets of headphones. I'll start running as well, so it's a fair test. And play. The volume up. Oh, wow. Wow. There's immediately, feels like 10 times more bass. It's like before I was listening to the music from outside a room and I've just walked into the room. That's what it sounds like. And I still have nothing in my ear. I wonder how leaky they are. I feel like they're probably a bit leaky. Could you hear that? I'm guessing maybe. Right, I'll drop them down to, right, that's more casual listening volume. They sound a lot louder, or at least seem a lot louder than the shocks. I feel like I'm shouting more. Right, I'm gonna go back to the shocks again. I mean, the shocks are good, but they're just missing something. They just don't have the same bass at all. Swap again. Oh, whoa, that is a serious difference. Oh, so many cars. Oh. And I can still hear those cars going past. Okay, so the music quality is a lot better. But, but what else is different? Well, the first thing I noticed is the fitting. The way the, the way the shocks fit, the way the bone conducting headphones fit, you notice there's a bit of a spring in them, which means they sort of snap against your head because they have to put pressure against those bones on the side of your head. And when you put them on at the start, it's fine. It's not a problem at all. They don't feel uncomfortable. It's like wearing a pair of glasses. But after you've been out for a really long run, that, even that slight, that slight pressure does start to irritate. And I find if I'm on a long run, Often what'll happen is I'll start to I'll get annoyed and the shocks will come off. The Ola Dance sports work slightly differently because there isn't really the same spring. They don't really push in, they they hang on your ears. So the weight is sort of on your ears, it's not it's not been pressed against your head. And they're three grams lighter than the shocks as well. So these are a bit more like wearing glasses. They're still very, very light, but there's no pressure against your head. Um, and particularly if you're a glasses wearer, I find I can wear these for, I can wear these all day really, because it is just like wearing a pair of glasses, the way the frames sort of touch the top of your ears. Yes, they still take a little bit of getting used to, like any new headphones do, 
but they don't irritate me in the same way that the shocks do on a long day. And speaking of all day, the Odan Sports have a 16 hour battery life. Contrast it with the 10 hour battery life of the Open Run Pro. Something I was very glad to see on the other dance was physical buttons for controlling them. There's a multi-function button on the left and a button on the right hand side that's used to switch them on and adjust the volume. The left hand button can be used to play, pause, multi-taps can be used to forward, go forward a track and go back a, tra a track. Now I was initially slightly concerned because they're not the biggest buttons in the world. I was a little bit worried about what they'd like to operate with, with gloves on, but I found in practice once I've got used to them, it's been, it's been fine. It hasn't really been a problem. Now I live in a very beautiful part of the world, but with that beauty comes often horrendous weather, rainy, damp, cold conditions. And any headphones that I've got on my head are gonna be experiencing the brunt of it. So this right here is, uh, is known as a river. And in case you don't know, rivers, are made from water and uh, most electronics really 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 don't like water there's also a lot of it falls from the sky at a lot of time of the year so any headphones that i use well they've got to survive this where'd they go oh no <laughs> Come back. Let's just see if they're still working. And they're fine because these are IPX8 rated. Um, the, the shocks, the bone conducting headphones are, I don't know the exact rating, but they're rated for sweat resistance and dust resistance. Whereas these are rated for full dunking, full immersion for I think 30 minutes something like that. I can't remember the exact figures, but you're never going to be able to kill a pair of these with anything that falls from the sky. And if you accidentally drop them in the river or in the sea, they're going to be just fine. Unless you drop them in the sea and they sink to the bottom and you've no way of getting them. But at least you can be happy in the knowledge that they were still working down there for quite a while. <laughs> so I think it's only fair if I answer the question, are there any issues with these headphones, anything I'm not totally satisfied with. And there's three things. One of them is how you charge them. You use this magnetic proprietary connection, snaps off, plug it into USB, really, really simple. But the downside is if you lose that cable, you gotta go buy a new one. You, you won't be able to charge them with anything else. They won't work with USB-C, which is a little bit annoying. I guess the reason for that is that if they had a USB-C connector on there, they wouldn't be able to get the same waterproof rate. And so it's one of those things you can have this, but you can't have this. And then the second thing is, I wish maybe there had been, the multifunction button had been larger and on the side, just so you could press it as a single tap instead of having to do like a pinch squeeze like that. Now, once I got used to that, it was fine. And I even found it, you know, no problem in a pair of thin running gloves. You just sort of squeeze that general area. But a larger button might have been nice for those times when I'm gonna be wearing maybe much larger gloves. And then the third thing is that unlike the bone conducting headphones, these don't press against your head, which is great for long-term comfort. It does mean if you want to take them off and just hang them around your neck, they don't feel that secure the way the, the Open Run Pros did. I felt I could just leave them on my neck, you know, to transport these. I feel like, I haven't managed to dislodge them yet, but they just don't feel as secure um, as the shocks did when, hung, when, hung, the, when hanging around your neck. But I guess, the counter to that is, well, they're comfortable enough to just leave up in your ears all day. Oh, and uh, in case you're not a fan of yellow, they are gonna be releasing them in a range of other colors. One thing that's really nice is that there is a smartphone app that lets you fine tune the sound balance, the EQ, and also lets you change what that multifunction button does on the side, which is quite nice, you wanna customize it. And it's also where you can update the firmware and the headphones. So I just want to say who these headphones are not for. These headphones are not for someone who just wants to get a pair of headphones to listen to music at the best quality possible. That's not what they're designed for. You, you can't compete with, you know, like proper over ear headphones when it comes to just pure sound quality. Um, these are designed for people who are doing active activities, who want to remain aware of the surroundings and who don't like 
the discomfort of having things in their ears or completely covering their ears. So if it's the world's best sound quality you're looking for, you might want to look somewhere else. Whereas if you're looking for the best headphones for sports, sports, sports and outdoors activities, this might be what you're after. Just something to point out. You hear that small stream down in there? I was running past here with these headphones on full power and I could still hear that. So that shows you just how these have that transparency where you can be sort of aware of your surroundings, aware of what's going on around you, but still immersed in the music. It's a little bit like you've got, I don't know, a sound system on the other side of a room where people are having a conversation. You can still hear the music, it's still coming through. You're hearing it sort of high fidelity, high quality, but you're still able to engage with the conversation at the same time. It's a little bit like that. I can enjoy my music, but still talk to the trees. So. <laughs> something something like that so yeah as i said earlier these are now officially my favorite headphones for outdoor activities particularly in trail running in beautiful places like this and if you like what you've heard pun intended there's a link down in the description where you can find out more